Unit 1, Fundamentals of Financial Planning, Lecture 4, Money Laundering. Money Laundering Money Laundering is defined as the man manipulation of illegally acquired wealth in order to obscure its true source or nature, which is achieved by performing a number of transactions with the proceeds of these criminal activities, but if successful, will leave the illegally derived proceeds appearing as a product of legitimate investments or transactions. Now, this conversion of illegally acquired wealth into apparently legitimate funds can take place through a number of mechanisms. For instance, the placing of cash in domestic or foreign banks, the purchase of certain expensive goods such as precious stones, metals or luxury cars, or integrating the funds into the economy through investors. Let's have a look at the what, the why, the objective and the outcome of money laundering. What is money laundering? We said it's a number of techniques, procedures or processes in which funds obtained illegally or through criminal activities are converted into other assets. Why? To conceal their true origin or source. The objective is to change the nature of the funds so that they appear to be from a legitimate source. An outcome is now these criminals can use these funds in their personal capacity to fund other criminal activities. What are the effects of money laundering? It affects legitimate business, negatively affects economic development, and has an impact on society at large. Now, in order to combat the effects of money laundering, a Financial Action Task Force has been established, and it's an intergovernmental body that sets standards and develops and promotes policies to combat money laundering and terrorist financing. At the moment, we are 36 member countries of the Financial Action Task Force. Money laundering consists of three steps. First step is placement. This is where the illegitimate funds enter the formal financial system. Step two is layering. It's a complex web of transactions to conceal the original source of the illegal funds. And then step three is integration, where these illegal funds appear to be legitimate money. And here we have the main piece pieces of legislation for anti-money laundering. First act is the POCA Act, Prevention of Organized Crime Act 121 of 1998. Then you have the POC-Tatara Act, the Protection of Constitutional Democracy Against Terrorism and Related Activities, Act number 33 of 2004. And lastly you have your FICA Act, the Financial Intelligence Center Act 38 of 2001. As a financial planner or financial advisor, it's important to be aware of the effects and consequences of money laundering. Because due to the process of money laundering, criminals often target financial institutions or financial advisors. So four basic principles to comply with is to comply with your counter money laundering legislation. You need to know your client and properly identify your client. You need to cooperate with law enforcement and always keep up-to-date policies, procedures and training programs in place in order to fight money laundering.